a few weeks ago concerning the 2021-2022 overspend of the special district budget. Tomorrow evening, the select board would like to discuss details of the school district's end of the year closure, audit results, and basic timeline of the events that occurred. We, as, all, as well as constituents who have reached out, have questions regarding the 2023 deficit and your plans to address this issue as well. The school board stated publicly they had no knowledge of what took place, so we feel the superintendent's presence is important and necessary. We believe Dr. Jetty may provide the clarity we are seeking and is best equipped to answer our questions and concerns. Board members are welcomed and encouraged to attend, as well as Mr. Toten. If he has insight on the situation, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow evening. Most sincerely, F. Robert Larry, Vice Chairman, Litchfield Board of Selectmen. Okay, would the select, um, school board like to come forward, please? Good evening. Welcome. Hello. <clears throat> Congratulations to the football team. Yeah, you did well. Win. Great day. Did very well. Any of you there? It was awesome. It really was a great day. I'd like to ask, where's the superintendent tonight? Um, uh, there was some confusion because the original email we got was from saying it was a school board meeting. So we assumed it was a school board meeting and then we got your email at quarter of 11 or 10.30 last night. Dr. Jetty is our employee. We've outlined where we're going, where we're planning to go. I don't think he belongs here. He absolutely belongs here. He's the only one that had knowledge of this. You folks publicly stated at your meeting, none of you had knowledge of this as it was going on. He's the only one that had knowledge. He should be here. Why? To answer the questions that only he could answer. From you, who? You? From, from all of us. What it, do you want me to start asking questions about the police department and the fire department right now? That's not in my purview. We didn't blow a one and a half million dollar deficit. It wasn't, it wasn't one, one and a half million dollars. Without the superintendent here to answer the questions, I really see no point in this meeting. And I will make a motion I'm that we discuss that this at a time when the superintendent can make himself available to talk to us. So I will make that motion. We have a motion by Mr. Larry. Anybody? No? Okay. I just, can, can I speak? Mm. One second. No. Okay. Kevin, are you seconding for discussion? No, I'm not going to second the discussion right yet. I have a question. The last two, two, two meetings ago, I believe, we've asked that we look into the audit. Mm -hmm. and that's the most important thing that we need to figure out what's, what's going on. I, figure, I agree with Bob that the superintendent and the finance people should be here because they are the ones who handle the finances. You're just a board, and that's like we are when everything, we're out the pop, it's going crazy. Right. Okay. Which runs side by side. None of us have control over each other. I, I fully understand that. I think it's, we need to figure out what happened. Oh, I agree. Okay, and have you asked for an audit to be done in, independently? Mm-hmm. You have? No, it's in process. And no, but, but it's But I don't it's think we need to share it with, with the select board. That's our... Okay. Department. I agree with what Bob is saying, but I also have, I understand it has to go through your division. Mm -hmm. Just like our department has to go through our division, Bobby. You know what I'm saying? Police, fire, and everything else. Okay? The audit is the most important part of this whole thing. Agree. I got taxpayers out there asking me what the hell is going on. Why aren't they asking us? Oh, I did refer. I, that's Thank just you. my question. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you okay. for I've forwarding always that. I think the reason why they come to us is the tax bill comes from town hall. Yes. Right? I, I can so see people's that. perception right. is that sure. everything comes to the select, but also residents are going to reach out to whom they're comfortable with. Sure. In, in As all elected officials, yeah. we should work together to answer the questions of you know, the master. We all go right to the taxpayers. So Absolutely. there are times like, you know, I'll get stuff for the school. People ask about bus routing and so forth, and mm -hmm. we'll pass it off the right thing. So there are times where 
we all have to answer to the taxpayer and they're going to be comfortable going to one board over the other because yeah. they don't see it as two separate boards. In like Massachusetts, they're Correct. all intertwined. So, I mean, and that's why. So it's not like anyone's trying to control anybody. We're all taxpayers here. We have a huge problem in front of us. Mm -hmm. And it just seems that individuals aren't getting the answers they want and that they're going to any elected official they can in order to try to get answers. And so my response, may I respond to that? Of course. Yeah. My response to that would be, we held a forum on September 19th to allow the public to come and ask questions. I believe all five of you were able to attend that day. Um, we have continued to discuss the topic at our school board meetings, which remain open, have public comment twice in our agenda. We continue to read all correspondence that comes in, and we haven't received a single correspondence since the September 19th meeting about this issue. And so I understand that you guys may get questions and I certainly can see why that's why people in town confusing. may believe mm -hmm. that you can you can answer them. But likewise, when we get a question about the town, we refer it over to you. So I appreciate that you are referring those questions over to mm -hmm. us. Um, because I think it's important to one read them into the record it's, as the vice chair It's my job to track all the correspondence And so I've been trying to make a really concerted effort to list out the details of every single correspondence we're getting and so that would be my first response my second response would be we ha do not have the audit report yet that what started this whole thing that was happening over July. So we will have that at so some So an point. independent audit, auditor was Not hired. the independent. Just so you're the, just having the regular audit We back haven't even it. received that report yet. But are you, I guess the question a lot of people are asking is, is there going to be an independent so auditor coming through? We as asked what our board? hope is. We're discussing that. The, what we're trying to weigh out is what is the costs. And so we have to figure out if it costs $100,000 to have someone come in and do a forensic accounting of our accounts, what is the cost benefit analysis to that? We don't know. And that's what we, we have. Need, we're doing our I mean, due based diligence. Based off of the yeah. error that happened, I think $100,000 would be worth it so it doesn't happen again. Because, I mean, this people have come to me, this comments, people are very concerned about that. Each individual project, you don't know what you're spending for each one. It's been done as a lump sum. There hasn't been like project 100.2, 100.4, 100.3. And, you know, and we have the same. Um, we have the same manager for both of them who's mm -hmm. doing stuff on GMS, did stuff yeah. for the vestibule, mm -hmm. did it. And when he bills, from what I hear, it doesn't sound like he's billing per line or we're not capturing it per line. Yeah. So we really don't know which project. So I think it's worthwhile to go back through. Oh, anything and change to learn from a forth. mistake. So, absolutely. I mean, I think from my standpoint, I think we as an, all of us as elected officials owe it to the taxpayer Agreed. to answer those questions. And I think the struggle is people don't feel that anybody's answering those questions. And it doesn't but, make and, a difference whether the school board or a select board. We're all the same group. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are off of Mass here, this Mass too. God let it go with that. We know you're from Mass. Okay. <laughs> and we all know. Okay. But we're all the same group. Okay. It all comes out of the same pocket. We issued the tax bill, yours. Okay. And I think we need to figure, to figure out and make sure that's fair. I want to know what happened. I've been in construction all my life. I've never have seen anything go this far out. And I think, again, I would refer you back to the September 19th presentation because that is the explanation we have been given. And I understand we need to dig, you're asking us to dig deeper on that. Yes. And we are. I am not a financial accountant. I am a special <laughs> ed teacher. I can't, I believe the numbers in front of me and I stand by that 100%. But I also, to the extent that you're getting questions, we can't answer them if they're not being asked of us. And so that's the difference. What I'm, there's a breakdown in communication. So if you're referring the questions you're receiving to All us, the time. they're not, they're not making it there. They're, I think the we're frustration not that the, from I understand the residents had is they went, they asked questions, their questions weren't answered. So now they're coming in the way they wanted them answered. They weren't answered fully. So now they're coming to anybody they can who's elected who can go help. So that's the can point. Can I we're specify at. they weren't answered or they weren't answered the way they wanted? Because I think the questions were. I have pledged. Liz has pledged. We have pledged transparency in this process, and I've, so. Mm. I understand people may not agree with that, but we have pledged to have transparency. And so we want to be able to reassure the town that this will not happen again. There are new things in, I'm sorry, what? But the problem with this 1.5, whatever is 1.3, whatever the number is, okay? That affects the tax cap for the town, okay? 
and the part of the bottom line budget is what we have to look at for the town. So you're going to look at how you're going to operate your budgets now with that loss in it, okay? And that's how I feel about it. You know, you guys got a hole in the wall, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's going to be adjusted through your operating budget budgets mm -hmm. to bring that back instead of bring, bringing it back to the taxpayers and make a mistake. That's my bottom line. Okay, that's I how I want, feel about it. I want you to know, after September 19th, I've never been spoken to that way. I've never been treated that way. And it was very easy for me to walk away, for Heidi to walk away, for anyone else to walk away. It was not a good look for Litchfield. And I'm nope. still here, and I'm still getting beat up. And I could walk away. My kid's done in six months. I don't need this anymore, but I want to help fix what's going on. And we are working behind the scenes, but we need to figure out how to... Or we're going to go over the questions and the scope we need. Transparency is what I'm looking for. Understood. Okay, completely for the town and the school board to bring it out. What the hell happened? Excuse my language. Line by, I agree. Okay, and that's the bottom line. And okay. I, and I think, I think we, we have that. tried. I, I do think we are working on that. Okay. You better step on toes. <laughs> Right. We may have to step we are on stepping toes. On. That's what I meant. Yeah, we do not have to, and that's I think where there's some frustration is that um, we want to. We're here today because we want to work with you. We want to collaborate. There are areas where we can work cooperatively and together. A school resource officer would be a great is one that we've already started. Um, facility improvement is another area. School safety. We want to have all of those conversations, but when. To me, it seems like we're getting an email that is insisting that we produce our district employee for an interrogation by a board that does not have jurisdiction or authority over that employee. It feels disin It does not feel like that collaboration is reciprocated. Well, when you send an email basically accusing us that we're not going to treat you professionally, when have I ever not treated anybody who came before this board professionally? And I read that email, Liz, that you sent, and I was taken back. I'm like, well, really? Well, there are things I mean, online and things that happened that night that have directly affected school board members, their children, by people who you all know in this room, in, the pu in public. I, I, it's hurtful. It isn't what Litchfield's about. 100% been there myself, but yeah, nobody oh, has ever, ever not been respectful to anybody sitting in front of this board. So This board. But, but what about on September 19th? I'm saying to this board, oh, so that's you'd why. be fearful to come here. We were. We, yeah, we are. We are. We but why, what, what have we ever done? How, when have I ever taught? He threatened to call the police on us not if on we you. showed up to he CIP. Threatened he threatened to you. call it on Dr. Jetty if he yeah, came yeah. to the CIP meeting. He, he did. He told me I had no integrity at the last meeting, school board met. You yeah. said Andrew has more integrity. You, 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 and you. I that absolutely is, did. Mm-hmm. And I stand by it. And unlike some of you folks over there who don't admit what you say, I said it. I stand by it. I still believe it. Mm -hmm. That man's got more integrity than the rest of the board combined, which was my statement that night. Oh, my God. That was the budget committee, right? And you don't think that's that a dis you don't think board. that's disrespectful. That was on the school board stuff. Okay. So I think it's disrespectful? Yes. I think it was warranted. Is it disrespectful? You can, you Would can you like someone you to want. speak to your wife that way or your daughter? Because I know my husband didn't my appreciate can it. Herself and so can my wife. Well, I don't appreciate Regardless, it. Neither does my family. Chairman Weber, okay. you okay. asked we're, us. We're going okay. down a yep, bad yep, path okay. here. We're all, okay. yep. we're all members. We're all yep. friendly. You asked us yes. why we felt the need to send that email, okay. why we were fearful. I'm getting all. We have reiterated that reason. So, yeah. again, to the rest of you who want to work with us collaboratively, we truly appreciate that and we want that opportunity. And we see a lot of areas for us to be able to work together. And um, we are doing things behind the scenes to get what you want. And you talk about treating people with respect. I watch how you treat Mr. Cutter. I watch you guys just lambaste him up one side and down the, the other that night that I spoke at your meeting. And then you went into non-public and did the same thing. How would you know you that? Know that. How do you sure, know that? Let me tell you. You should always make sure that there's nobody in the lobby when you go in non-public, especially when you start... There was no voices raised in non-public. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, yeah, I, you know what? Mr. Chairman, um, there's, there's one particular thing that uh, I am specifically interested in 
uh, which is the CIP. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, is there anything that we have two members of the school board here tonight, is there anything that we can cover with them particular to the CIP that will help us as selectmen make future decisions? Well, I don't think there's anything on the CIP we can do right now because they're over actually Doing it. putting everything <laughs> right now into the year and so forth. So once they do that, they're going to present it to the planning board. Next week. Then there will be a week. public hearing where members of the public can ask questions concerning it. Both then it will be back to the board of selectmen for us to accept it or reject it. But we, we're here with two members of the school board. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that they can <coughs> fill us in with respect to the CIP? You've already presented to mm -hmm. yeah. CIP. They presented mm -hmm. last week. It's on like committee report. Mm -hmm. and, okay. and it was supposed to end last night, but you were missing it uh, last time and you were missing information and you're working through it. They're working through it They're now. They're prioritizing yeah. tonight. They have the information. They're just prioritizing, but it does, it, it does uh, affect our impact fees. So that's why they needed to be on it mm -hmm. for the school. Mm -hmm. That's why it was imperative that you came. So, Mr. Totten so is about, over you're at asking that about a meeting week ahead right of time. now. <laughs> All right. Well, then that satisfies me um, as far as. Yeah, I had a comment. Um, I hate disagreeing with you and not making a motion like that because I understand mm -hmm. that people want the numbers. We understand that. I but understand I understand frustration. I'm Irish. I have oh, I know, I know. temper, but too. I just want to say the, <laughs> re the reason I didn't agree is I do agree we need the numbers. Mm -hmm. And I do agree it's your department but it's more important this town starts to heal yeah and i, I, I did not want you leaving but we have to get this solved we have to move past this somehow that. right so i i know maybe i'm out of line but I, i'm trying to remember two or three weeks ago the the two main questions were when you wanted you to come in was fiscal year 2022 closed yes or no yes, yes. and then what 2023 may have a deficit i don't know but if it does, is there a process in place on how you're going to handle that? Was, have, was that the two questions that we had? That was two. And then the third, one, and the third one that's coming in, there's an impending change order. And how uh, is that yeah. going to be taken care so of? So do you want them? Do you want to ask if them they that if to, they're I here? Mean, so is 2022? the pending change order question without, without Doug. Doug here and Dr. Jetty. But we can email over an answer for that for you. Um, with respect to the 2022, yes, it was closed. Um, the uh, documents have been filed with the state, um, and it is closed even. Uh, for 2023, we are working very hard to ensure there will be a zero balance at the end of the year. Um, it's November. not easy. We've got seven months left. Um, people are understand the situation that we're in. We're doing our very best. There isn't a budget freeze yet, so uh, despite any comments that people may be hearing there has not been a budget freeze but we're we're obviously being careful with what we're spending at this point so you have a process in place you're trying absolutely. to absolutely and absolutely and and again we're very lucky and i'm going to sing his praises again mr totten is top notch he is on top of this stuff he has a process his reporting to us has changed and so we feel more we feel more empowered and more Manifest, knowledgeable everything has changed um, oh, so Doug there is have doing been, a great job. Yeah, yeah there have been some really good changes that have come from this it's unfortunate that it needed to happen that way and you know certainly uh, regret it but i just want to echo your sentiment about healing and moving forward because i do think a good part of the town is looking to do that and so i appreciate you letting us be here and and to speak because um again i think it's in the town's best interest to have us working collaboratively rather than confrontationally and to add to that i think one thing is important that kim needs to be informed our administrator with the budget now and the numbers and the same idea so she can inform us and what's going on you understand what i'm saying kim whatever they do in the process for the year how close they can keep it to be zero the budget deficit okay to let us know is that possible we can certainly find out i can't see how do you feel not? about that <laughs> i'm not i can't read you yet you're new <laughs> i'm sorry Kim. I'm i don't thought. it's uh, a it's a courtesy yeah. courtesy go of course yeah. go ahead yeah so oh thank you um you know i think that i agree wholeheartedly um, with selectman queen and it's always in the best interest of of the town and the schools to work together. Um, having sat in your shoes, 
<laughs> I, I fully understand where you're coming from. Um, if there is anything that, that I can do, whether it's to keep the board informed, whether it's to give information, whether it's to assist our, um, superintendent, you know, we're here. Uh, Karen and I met with Doug and mm -hmm. uh, There used to be a triannual meeting. With we used to do it quarterly, so forth. And what it was is <clears throat> we get all the department heads together. Mm -hmm. uh, we get the school, we get the town, we get the business administrator, the town administrator, and I think the budget committee chair. And we'd get together and just talk about what's going on because we never wanted to have competing warrant articles. Exactly. So we try to balance yeah. it out. COVID hit and we stopped having those meetings. Yeah. Do you, would you think, would you be interested in reinstating percent. I those? think there were great meetings when we did have them. It helped out a lot. Yeah. So forth. awesome. Um, another concern we have is that we were requested a copy of the contract from the budget committee. Ms. Kleiner at put in two requests to it. The what? What, what contract? The contract for the LMS project. I hear where you're going. It, it was contract. sent. It was has not been sent. We had our attorney call your attorney. We still don't have it thus far, and there's an email that Ms. Kleiner will be sending to our attorney concerning it. My understanding is that. Again, I don't want to speak out of turn, but that the attorneys have been going back, back and, forth. and forth. They had a productive conversation mm -hmm. last week, mm -hmm. um, and they tried to connect today. They were not able to do so in advance of today's meeting, um, but that there should be information. As you see, we had legal counsel today, and she said saw, they, yeah. she, she was did, like she was did fast. not have it, <laughs> and she <laughs> said it was supposed to be sent. We referred to another email that. Ms. Kleiner has, and she was taken back by it, so she will now go and try to get it. Oh. To the point we were told that you don't need that contract. Okay, I don't so, know anything about that. So we're just, we're just trying to help with the budget committee by doing so forth, and we're not getting a 91A, right, because it's a public document. So we should be able to get it. And you know, we shouldn't get to the point that we're going to have to file no, a 91A no, on each no, other no, to get no, a public document. No, 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 and I think that would be a good time for you to reach out. I mean, if well, I, I just can... learned about it all tonight. Okay, so perfect. So have it. I knew so there was a question was asked. So maybe some correspondence between you and Liz on that. Because 91A we can, contract? We can avoid that. No, 91A no, is the oh, right to file. Not, yeah, filing sorry, for the right sorry. to know. It's a public yeah. document. So. All right, FOIA request. Oh, my God. Um, okay. That's... We can look into that. So I appreciate don't have that. a set yep. answer in front of no, me. No, but I just but wanted to let you yep, know that we learned this it. evening that we yeah, still that's a conversation have to have that it. we can have. You asked what a week ago? Yes. Next time, will you include me in the C C C me in yes, any I, of this? I part? believe I, that I wasn't even part of the email. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I believe that um, Superintendent Jetty asked a staff member to send it, um, oh. and then a couple days later, um, he indicated that. He didn't think that it answered the question or was needed in, to answer the question. We will follow up with that after this asked. meeting. Thank you. Okay. Was this the question about the warrant article? Yes. Okay. So what the, t the number that the town approved versus the number of the contract, but the number on the warrant article was for the municipal lease. Correct. Not for the contract. Correct. Okay, but you still want a copy of the contract. Do I have that right? Yes. Oh, and and, and yes. to be clear, the contract was requested um, from the town from the town to okay. the budget committee. So the budget committee I, I, I need to, to answer. That's yeah. what I want to hear. So That's maybe. why Ms. Kleiner was involved because the budget committee came to us. Is that, does that normally happen? The budget committee goes to the select so the board to request a document? So the budget committee sits underneath both of them. Yeah. So they can go either path they want. Okay. You know, when they were looking at something for the school, they didn't think it was appropriate to go to the school's attorney, right? To go to the town's attorney and ask for it. So that was the path they took. I guess I'm not sure why it needed to go to either attorney. I, I'm curious in terms of if it's a request for the contract, they why wouldn't want, that they, they asked the town legal counsel to review the contract. Okay. Okay. We can do that. We can look into yep. that. Yep. Just call the clerk of the works. You don't have one. Good luck. Clicker? Clerk of the works. works. Clerk of the works. Oh, sorry. Yeah. We've talked about that term mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very important to have yes. in construction. Very I feel so much better now. Thank you all. <laughs> we can continue. Thank you. <laughs> this was a rough week for us. Our, our buddy. Liz's face has gotten know, a little less bad. I know. I have high blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> but we've never treated anybody in front of this board unprofessionally. Thank you. I will come back you've whenever watched, you ask me now. You've watched many meetings. I have. And we never have. Okay, then. Anything right. else? Are there any other questions that we can take back? 
I have noticed that. Just the change order follow up when they get it. Yes. That but they're still waiting for information. And please get us a copy of the contract, contract. so we can take care the of it. Change order is a very important. No, I understand, but that's that's Dr. Jetty and that's construction Mr. Totten. 101. Yep. Absolutely. And they're on top of that stuff. They meet weekly to go over those change orders. Mm -hmm. That is something that <laughs> regularly happens. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Please reach out evening. anytime. And you can call me Liz. I Madam, do in, person, in, a personal, in a personal setting, I do. Okay. <laughs> in a business setting, I don't. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Next up, we have the appointments of the Deputy Health Officer and one for the Lower Merrimack Valley River Advisory Committee. Ms. Kleiner. So, uh, good evening. So, this question came to my office, um, and we really feel it was just an oversight. So, in December of 2021, Mr. Uh, Blackwell was appointed um, and confirmed as the health officer for the town of Litchfield. Deputy health officer. Oh, no, Blackwell. Okay, sorry. sorry. Blackwell. Yeah, 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 yeah. And at the time, you had Mr. Doobie. Um, and you had Mr. Kelly, who were deputies. Mm -hmm. Both of their um, terms have expired. So there's been some conversation. Um, Mr. Kelly is interested in continuing. He has submitted his paperwork, which is, um, and he has a background check on file, so that's all set. Um, so we would like the board to consider appointing Mr. Kelly once again as deputy health officer for the town of Litchfield. Yep, if Mr. Blackwell is out, you got the deputy to cover, to cover, it makes sense. I make a motion, we approve it. We have a motion by Mr. Lynch. Second. Second by Mr. LaSalas. All those in favor, Mr. Leary. Aye. Mr. LaSalas. Aye. Mr. Lynch. Aye. Ms. Queenan. Aye. I am also an aye. My motion carries 500. And now we have the Lower Merrimack Valley River Advisory Committee. Um, so as you know, um, the board received um, a letter from the state asking for volunteers to represent the town of Litchfield on the Lower Mer Merrimack um, Valley River Advisory um, Board. Uh, we reached out to the Conservation Commission, the Recreation Commission. Um, I think we discussed it at CIP. Um, and two members um, from the town have come forward. Uh, Diane Plansky, representing the Conservation Committee, um, and Jeff Town, mm -hmm. representing the Recreation Committee. So if acceptable with the board, we'd like to put forward their nomination. There is a process that continues. They fill out the form. That goes to the state, and the state is the one that actually confirms them. And that will give us, if they're confirmed, they'll give us three or four. It'll give us three, three. because Mr. Croto is currently on. on. So we, we so we'll may have, have one more mm -hmm. if one more steps forward. There was talk of someone else being addressed, but that hasn't come to my office okay. yet. So that's good. So that will give us planning, conservation, and recreation all covering it. Yeah. Now this lower Merrimack Valley River Advisory Committee, what realm or, or what are they a part of? Great question. So. They, the committee actually sits and um, together with Hudson, Nashua, Merrimack, Lower. Uh, they review um, planning or development plans that are brought forth and make recommendations to the state on what the impact would be to the ri to the riverbed. So, are they part of the uh, the planning board? Uh uh, Michael Croto, who's the chairman of the planning board, is also a member of this committee. Yes. So he, he communicates back and forth with them okay. and attends the meetings, keeps them updated, yeah. or brings their feedback. So pretty much if anyone wants to build somewhere near the river, it ha the plans have to go in front of this committee for their input also. So this is an official committee 
under the auspices of the state? The state DES, yes. Oh, the Department of Environmental Services. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Do we have a motion to accept Ms. Plansky and Mr. Town? So moved. Motion by Mr. LaSalas. Second. Second by Ms. Queenan. All those in favor, Ms. Delary. Aye. Mr. LaSalas. Aye. Mr. Aye. Lynch. Ms. Queenan. Aye. I am also an aye. Motion carries 500. Next, we have Recreation Committee impact fees for pickleball courts. Mr. Burns and Ms. Brennan, welcome. Did you want to do public input? We haven't done public input yet. I will do it after this. Okay. Yeah, there's so much public here. Everyone sitting here is tied in with pickleball. And oh, is it? Then we just have somebody who enjoys <laughs> being with us. <laughs> the only sport that I know is you can go slower. Do you play pickleball? I haven't. No. I have. <laughs> Looks like fun. It is fun. It's an age-related type game. No. Not really. You're about that. to find out. <laughs> yeah. We thought it was, Bob. I thought it was. That's me. That's my mugshot. <laughs> oh. oh, look at that one. Great. Thank, you. Thank you for having us this evening. Uh, I'm Chris Burns. I'm Judy Brennan. Both members of the Recreation Commission. And Judy. we've come to discuss the, uh, the, the use of impact fees for, uh, for construction of pickleball courts at Sawmill Brook, Brook Park. Um, this, this started back in April. Uh, the, the Litchfield Pickleball Association uh, met with us uh, to discuss repairing the tennis courts. Uh, currently, they have lines on one of the courts for, for their use. Um, and as you can see in these pictures, the courts are in kind of rough shape there. Um, so so we, we went and got some estimates to repair and repaint the tennis courts at Sawmill. Uh, the, the, those numbers came in around $30,000. Obviously, that's a lot higher than we have in our budget. Um, so we decided to explore the use of available impact fees to build new courts since impact fees can't be um, used for repair of existing um, structures. And the impact fees would be no cost to the taxpayer. Um, in case you don't know what pickleball is, uh, it's been around for almost 55 years. started in, in, in Washington State. Um, it is a professional sport. It's governed by the, the USA Pickleball um, Association. And there's 4.8 million participants in the U.S., uh, 3.5 million of those being considered casual players. Um, the age of, of, of the average player is, is around 38 years old, and that's dropping every year. Um, and it's becoming more and more popular. Uh, people like Tom Brady and LeBron James, um, Drew Brees, they're, they're becoming owners of professional teams. So um, pickleball in Litchfield, the Lick, uh, Litchfield Pickleball Association, which falls under our Recreation Commission, um, was formed in 2011, so a little over 10 years ago. Started with 39 members. We now have 137 members. Um, they play inside Talent Hall in the winter. They use our tennis courts, which are or were lined for pickleball also, so you have multiple lines on there, but they're faded, and as you saw, the Courts cracking, grass is coming up there. Um, they currently have to bring their own nets every time and set them up every time they come to play. Um, they bring their own gear, just like anybody playing another sport in town would, would bring their own, but then they have to break down, take those nets down, take them with them, or store them somewhere um, when they do play. Um, we don't have any permanent pickleball courts. We just have the basketball court that they kind of line with tape inside Talent Hall. Mm -hmm. And then what's on the tennis courts and our tennis <clears throat> courts get far more use from pickleball players than from tennis. So, uh, pickleball court is um, 20 feet by 44 feet. You can fit four pickleball courts in one tennis court. They can be set up differently um, right now, the way they're set up with the tennis courts is the tennis net is kind of to their back and they're kind of back into it. And then the court extends beyond what the tennis court would be over towards by the fence. So it's a, a little bit squishy, but with the dimensions, you can essentially fit four pickleball courts into a tennis court. Um, and then you have what's called your overrun um, is your space between courts they share and then between the back of the court and where your net 
your net would be. So your average court with its overruns would be um, 30 or 32 feet by 64 feet. So you have some extra room on the sides and mm -hmm. room for fencing. And looking at a location for the for the project, um, we were looking at Sawmill Brook Park, and they have two parcels of land there. Um, parcel A is 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 35 acres, and it, it's con it consists of the parking area, uh, the, the the fields themselves uh, stretches back to the recycling center, and, and the woods beyond that. And then there's a smaller portion. Um, parcel B is two acres, and it's comprised of the, the the driveway and the tennis courts up front. When we were looking at options on locations for this within those areas um, we we had no idea of the cost yet so we were we really took every consideration here from four <coughs> courts to eight courts um, so these are the four court options um, all different locations and then we put together a, a layout for eight courts which is number seven in the blue there stretching um, uh, uh, along the, the the driveway and uh, six courts which is option Eight, the green layout there uh, that, that stretches parallel to the parking lot. So as a Recreation Commission, we um, decided having the six courts in this setup would be the best fit for the area. The it's directly across from the tennis courts. It runs parallel with the tennis courts, <clears throat> parking right there um, in front of them. It leaves a uh, fair amount of space behind it if we wanted to ever do playground or other recreational activities in, in that area. Um, so we could get six courts in, taking up a minimal amount of space and still leaving land for any other development or activities that we would, would want to do, and it's ideal for parking. Mm -hmm. This is what our vision is. This one is in Cape Cod. They have more courts, obviously then we would have this vision. You can see the space in between. They have the soft netting in between the courts also, if you look at that, or the soft fencing. Um, so if your ball gets hit out of bounds, you're not chasing it all the way down to someone else's court. The other thing is that the way this is set up, instead of being set up for on a tennis court, you're not, when you're entering, you're not crossing anybody else's game court it makes it a lot easier just go in and out and it mirrors the tennis court so this made the most sense to us to have that have it run in a pad of once probably 170 to 180 feet by 64. we have gotten some cost estimates already um, this company dg contracting i believe they're out of amesbury massachusetts um, they, they gave us a quote for the six courts uh, which would be approximately 170 feet by the 64 feet. Um, that is assuming that the site and pad work are done by others. Uh, we have had a very generous resident in town donate that portion of it, um, and he's looking to get started on it ASAP. Uh, we've also had uh, another resident um, that's offered to do the survey work, um, which is hopefully later on this week. We get your um, approval on Thursday. <laughs> so their proposal is, is for a pre-finished tile court, which would be over the concrete or asphalt uh, pad that gets laid down. Uh, it's a perforated interlocking tile that's uh, polypropylene and that 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 price includes the uh, the in-ground posts and removable nets. Um, I'm doing a little bit of research on this. Supposedly it provides exceptional protection against skin abrasions, head injuries, and joint strain uh, over the, the hard concrete or asphalt surface. Um, superior traction in, in wet and dry conditions. Uh, their price does include freight costs um, and there are a number of colors to choose from. It's got a 10-year anti-fade warranty on the, the color and a 15-year limited warranty on the product itself. It is made in the U.S. Um, they also gave us an optional um, quote for the fencing, which would be a 10-foot tall fence uh, with, with one gate, and we can, we can talk to them about that a little bit more, but that'd be another $28,000. Um, we did get a, 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 another estimate from New England Sports Floors. Um, six court layout as well uh, same same deal with the site and pad work being by others this is the the lower end being where they just paint over the finished pad um, the asphalt. and line it uh, <clears throat> currently their price does not include any nets or fencing um, although they can do that they just didn't have time to get that over to me um, 
the, the the main differences I would think is that you know if it gets wet um, during, after a rain and, and it gets puddled, it's probably a little bit harder to play on this than it is the the tiles. And, and um, as far as a warranty go, it's really only as good as the pad and the paint from peeling. So our options for funding the pickleball courts. Um, looking at surveying site work pad work six courts fencing um, could be upwards of one hundred and twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars at the high end and then it could be significantly lower um, but we don't have all those numbers in yet um, so um, what we plan to do if we get the approval is to start collaborating with the litchfield pickleball association get in our other estimates and see what what fits litchfield best um and we need that input from the people who do play often um so that's why we don't have ex more exact exact numbers um our funding options um we're asking for impact fees our impact fees expire next year we do not have any other major projects on the table right now and considering we started working with this in April and it's taken to this point to get gather our information um, and even be able to present it to you <coughs> we're thinking that there's not really anything else that's going to come up or nothing else has been in the talks of using that money um, we could use ARPA funds um, we could ask for a warrant article which we do not want to do <laughs> um, we have talked with um, beautification to help with like the mulch and just kind of neatening up the area after the pads in and for some benches and when we had started the process we talked with the uh, Litchfield Pickleball Association about maybe um, being able to help with providing their accessories whether it's the ball baskets or signage or kind of those extra things that that we won't have in the budget so we're here tonight asking for your support <coughs> Um, or not to exceed the, the 122. Not, yeah. uh, and the biggest so caveat is to get it going as soon as possible to get the site work done. Before um, the the person who wants to, who is willing to put in that pad for us, wants to do it as soon as possible. He's got some downtime. Mm -hmm. So if this were to pass tonight, we have a tentative meeting set up with the surveyor for Thursday morning to take a look at that um, and be able to lay it out for us. Um, we don't anticipate any issues. There's a little bit of a drainage ditch on one side that still isn't going to impact the size of the court. No, it will affect it. And then you have the planning board. Hmm? You have to go to the planning board still. Um, we did. We were going to. Our thought was go planning board, then you guys. But we're on such a tight constraint now to get that pad done mm -hmm. for free that your meeting came up first. Yep. <laughs> so we so did. Next week. We would go to the planning board, so that just to make them aware. I've been in contact with the planning board and uh, emailing back and forth with Joan and um, as of right now it doesn't seem like we're needed to present there I've sent her pictures and layouts and, and all the measurements and everything that we're looking for um, I haven't heard that they want us to come tomorrow night I guess they got a pretty busy agenda as it is but um, yeah so come on down <laughs> Or okay. we could just easily go when we have more information yep. if, or if they have questions okay. for us. So oh, you have good. questions, hopefully we could answer them. Okay. Good. So your desire is for a hundred not to exceed a hundred and twenty two thousand right. correct to be taken from impact fees? Correct. I'll move that. We have a motion by Mr. LaSalas. I'll second it. Second by Mr. Lynch. Any further discussion? I just have a question. Of course. Because I'm looking at, we're working on the SIP plan. It was on the SIP plan. So it's going to come off of it. If, if they can do the impact, impact fees. <laughs> come off. All right. We That's like these thing. coming off. <laughs> I just want to make sure. The numbers sounded too familiar. <laughs> One wreck that's dropped off. Okay. Well, yeah, the site there is not that bad on that back side there. Yeah, it's, it's really, it's a perfect spot for it. It is, it is. It, it's a clean spot. And we've had a lot of um, we've we've had a lot of support for this with the LPA and and just residents in general. A lot yeah. of people have been in favor for the. Yeah, Dude, tennis is hotter. Pickleball is easier. You ain't got to run as much. You don't. It's true. <laughs> That's what I love about it. It's a quarter of the size of the tennis court. Yeah, exactly. You're dying chasing the ball. You know, when you get older, you know, I'm not going that far. No, and if you play <laughs> you play doubles. Yeah. It's it's just a lot easier than tennis. <laughs> All right, we have a motion. It also um, will give us some potential for bringing some income too with um, 
possible tournaments. Mm -hmm. or, so. You got it. And the high school could probably use it if they get a team as well. High well, schools are. I know there's also discussion if you can try to get a playground in that area too. I believe. Yep. But that, we have room yeah, for, for that behind around. it. Yeah. Yep. The other side, pickleball has been a big, big thing since I came to town here working in the, in the wintertime. It, it's busy as heck up there, okay, because yeah. that's the only place they really got. Mm -hmm. But when you get into spring and summer and fall, they like to get out, okay. You may have some portable bathroom there theories you have to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's really good that pickleball has taken off yeah, I agree and I, I think it's good that the town shows some support for recreational activities that is not targeted toward kids, kids. Mm -hmm. and in this great. case yeah. pickleball <clears throat> it's my impression that most pickleball players are more senior you got my and here. it's good it's good you know to have something for them mm -hmm. Well, Most as a commission, we're committed to trying to provide more activities for all ages and all abilities mm -hmm. and not just yep. youth, so that falls into our goals yep. there also. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Mr. Larry? Aye. Mr. LaSalas? Aye. Mr. Lynch? Aye. Ms. Queen? And aye. I'm also an aye. Motion carries Thank five you. zero zero. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much you. for all the hard work. I hope you made your Monday night feel better. <laughs> I hope you made your Monday night feel better. <laughs> oh, it's been a little hairy. Thank you so much. You're most welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Nice to see you. No, not at all. I'd go with you if I could. <laughs> Thanks. Got the agenda Thanks, Judy. Be well. No. Were the other folks that were here, were they? They were pickleball people. Pickleball. Yeah. Oh. Great. Yeah. Good night, Chris. Good night, Andrew. Still don't know what that game is. What's that? What? Still don't know anything about that game. I don't either. I've seen it played a lot. All right. Next, we have the resignation of Francis X. Freitzel, the third fire chief. I make a motion. We accept it. <laughs> we have a motion by Mr. Lynch. I'll second. Second by Mr. LaSalas. Do we have discussion? Apparently he's got a good job offer and go somewhere else. Yeah. From what I heard. That's right here, too. I wish him the best. Yeah. And thank him well, for his service to the town. I thank him for all the years, all the hard work he has done for us. His job as emergency management director, getting us through COVID, did a fantastic job doing that. And it's, it's really been a joy working with the chief. And I personally hate to see the chief go. Oh, thank you. All those in favor, Mr. Larry. Aye. Mr. LaSalas. Aye. Mr. Lynch. Aye. Ms. Queenan. Aye. Ms. I am reluctantly an aye also. Five zero zero. Next, we have request from NHMA files prior to January 2015. Ms. Kleiner. We received this <clears throat> communication um, from the New Hampshire Municipal Association. It seems space is limited everywhere. Um, so um, they are going to be asking every community um, to either alert them, either through email or through written correspondence, um, whether or not we would be interested in having any legal correspondence between the NHMA and the town um, prior to January 1, 2015, sent back to us, or whether they are, are okay to um, <clears throat> destroy it. Do so we have a copy of those? If they don't hear from us, they will destroy it. Do we have a copy of all that correspondence ourselves to keep? Uh, well, so I think 2015 is probably prior to the drive is that fair to say again the google drives so oh no we got google in 2011 11 so mm. four years yeah do we have a legality to keep the documents that's i i want to be careful here because i think it depends upon what the legal what is. issue was correct so that's what i'm thinking if we 
destroy them, and if we ever need them, we have an issue. Right. Now, then the other thing, is there a way we can get the documents so we don't have to dry storage? Can we have them scanned in so we at least can keep them? Do they still do microfish? <laughs> um, I hope not. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a blessed memory if they just scan it all in. Sorry, Rich. <laughs> then it just sits in the cloud somewhere in case we ever have to get to it. So, I, from I, what I, I understand, take it from your, <laughs> from your derisive attitude toward my question that I am showing my age here. With but me. I can say that probably every person in this room has used it before. Yes, <laughs> I have used it very often. And I know um, I have also. So. I don't think, from what I understand, these are paper files. Um, and that's part of the reason why they would like to dispose of mm -hmm. them. Um, and they did indicate we could either pick them up or they would arrange to have them shipped to us. Um, I think to be safe, we're best to take them. We don't know how many there may be. Maybe one box, maybe ten boxes. I mean, um, and at least look through them to see if it is an issue that, that requires... For the records to be kept and um we can scan them we have the the ability to do so mm -hmm. um, and place them on the drive um, yeah. we can alert i guess we board. figure out how to scan them when we see the quantity right we don't have any idea the quantity yeah, right pounds or tons yeah. or when can we switch to mitchell group we got all hey chodes as boxes okay I'm sure it was. They may be down now, Kevin. The oh, I don't know if they're still in in what I call my vaults. The vault down the other end. I, okay. Down down uh, the cable. Yeah. Yeah. It may be some in there. I thought we got like ten or there was a lot of boxes. Yes, there was at one time. A lot of boxes. Yep. Yeah. But this is correspondence directly between the town and the. New Hampshire Municipal Association. And a lot of it's a quick little question legal. about this, question so, about that. Right. You may not have, you may have used your own legal. Most of those you won't use much of, okay, because we all go to our legal, legal first. Right. And the association, the Municipal Association, is a guide, guideline, okay? I think there's a lot of lower questions we go to NHMA on. Yeah, it's free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It's free because we already pay into it, right? It's like quick. Yeah. yeah. So these would include things where today you would just fire off an email and get an email back. Yeah. And some of these may be emails. And they may. Yeah. Yep. So I think we at least should get them back, do our due diligence, go through them, see what they are, and if we need to keep it, scan it in so we have, you know, copy it. another building. Mm, basement. <laughs> just kidding. Old fire station. We got the firehouse. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do it. Let's, let's get them. Whatever they got, get them. We'll go through them. Okay? If that's the best thing to do, and not keep them all if you don't have to, then we'll be all set. Everybody in agreement? Okay. Seeing that it is 740, we'll open it up to public input. Do we have any members of the public who would like to provide input this evening? No, they all left. Since there's nobody in here, we will close public input. We'll move on to the MS4 annual report submission. Ms. Kleiner. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Since the uh, discussion earlier in the evening could have sparked some, some um, attendance on online mm -hmm. can we check to see if there is anybody uh online who would well, have... i don't think we have webex going this evening oh so oh okay yeah and if it's on youtube there's no way to comment on youtube okay so right. but we'll welcome anybody um next meeting to come and chat with us or beforehand we love when the public comes and sits with us we look forward to it okay ms4 I am very happy to report <laughs> uh, that the MS4 uh, Gear 4 annual report has been filed with the EPA and right on time. Thank you very much to Mr. Brown, um, who we Your MS4. have. MS4. What's that? The MS4. So uh, 
Mr. Brown and I and the New Hampshire DES combined forces um, and it is submitted and accepted by the EPA. And Kevin, take the pat on the back. The take the pat. You came here to get a pat on the back, now go home. <laughs> great work, both of you. Thank yeah. you very much for getting that completed. It's greatly appreciated. You're right on time to get your pat. All right, next we have purchase order approval for $18,474.03 to Bulldog Fire Apparatus. Ms. Kleiner. Uh, so the fire department um, did get this um, invoice or the quote at least. Uh, I don't believe the engine has been um, completed. Uh, they are choosing to take it out of their vehicles, uh, vehicle repairs and maintenance within their budget. Mm -hmm. um, it's for $18,474, and it's for the repairs to engine four. four. Yep. Beautiful. Okay. Saw that that was in the consent folder. I don't think we need a motion for that. Coming out of the operating budget. It is. Don't have to worry about it. All right, next we have budget update. Ms. Yeah, Kleiner and Ms. White. We got five minutes. I think the best news is we have a tax rate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, it's 1903. Um, the town clerk did indicate just prior to this meeting that she had reviewed. A draft of the bills and they will go be mailed tomorrow so the tax bills will go out tomorrow and what's the bottom line as far as the tax rate 1903 which is compared to last year 1844 18 what 1844 was last, last year yeah that's 56 so about 59 cents higher yeah we voted for it. <clears throat> so I think you'll see that um, if you've been following along, um, we did in the during the tax setting process receive some updates and revenues for mm -hmm. like meals and rooms, which came in significantly higher for 2022. Highway block grant came in higher. Um, so as a result, we you know, Karen and I discussed it and felt confident in moving up the 2023 um, anticipated revenue for those line items. Then we received the workman's compensation 2023 rate, um, which was a reduction from 86,473 to 73,850. So that's a savings of mm -hmm. 12,623. To make a long story short, um, as the budget now, as been as it's been adjusted by the budget committee, is now seventeen thousand two hundred and twenty below the tax oh. cap. Um, I you. will say that there are some issues mm -hmm. that both the police department and the fire department. Um, have brought and, and I'll put those together for you um, concerns from some of those cuts yeah definitely okay. and I know the Recreation Commission is very concerned about the cuts also to them to the point they have no money for any maintenance if anything happens hmm. uh, I don't know Karen did I miss anything yet um, I, I mean, I just have the one thing that, um, you know, we we're looking to put some money back into some of these departments is to use the fire department impact fees as we did this year mm -hmm. to pay down. You know, we're pulling it out of the budget for next year, which just kicks it down the road. But with the farm and we should be collecting more impact fees, I would think that we could do that again next year as mm -hmm. well. That maybe you'd want it, you know discuss that vote on it to put maybe 25 or 30 out of fire impact fees to pay down that bond that, um, yeah. next year and get it out of the yeah. budget you know that give will help out. a little more um, money there <clears throat> but 
Okay. That's my thought. Thank you. Draft warrant articles to date. Ms. Kleiner. So I don't think that um, unless the board chooses, we were ready to discuss these in detail, but we wanted to put them out to you so that you could take a look mm -hmm. at them. Um, many of them will look familiar as they're commonly done year after year. Um, I have not met with, and please forgive me if I'm wrong, but I believe I need to meet with the health um, officer and then our citizens representative yep. for the health yep. agency yep. recommendations. Um, I plan to do that um, in the next uh, week or so and put that out so we don't have that information. But this is sort of a rough draft. I do know that we expect something um, perhaps from the library. Mm -hmm. So that's not included in here. Um, and in addition, you know, we've been looking at um, some suggestions from other towns um, that have a tax cap and how mm -hmm. they calculate that, um, just so that it's something that you could look at. And I'd love consider. to go back and look at the calculation because I always thought it was supposed to be calculated proposition two and a half in mass. Anything that was voted in isn't part of it. Right. So, so you'd have to read the RSA on it. It's it's your, I think it's, I should have it in front of me, but something about when you go to vote and you post your MS-7, it can only be, is it your MS-7, $175,000 over last year's voted appropriation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, with that, if somebody, if we got a warrant article passed that raised and appropriated, um, you get to take you know mm -hmm. that money into it some of it's a revenue offset you're taking it in as a gross appropriation but you're you're also using it as a revenue but it can only be what you voted and appropriated so we we you know would do six months for an employee you can only take six months into Correct. that next year that's all you voted for and appropriated you can't take what you estimated you know might be so i think just a it got so almost that half year that we always do is hurting, hurting us from us. that standpoint. Yes. So you may want to go back to April. But if you go back and look at like when we did the telecommunication tower and all that, I mean, Ooh. you would think that that would be taken out because it was voter approved. It would only be it's, what is over, which was not approved by the Well, board. that gets into your budget the next year. So it, so it seems to be like your first year is where you kind of hit the loophole because mm -hmm. you only did it for six months. You only... Yeah. But once it's in there the next year, it's in there. It's in there, yeah. yeah. But it's that yeah. first year that you're really it's, paying it's the price on it. It's kind of that first year that you're paying the price on it, yes. Yeah. You know, like the union contract, if it passes mm -hmm. and you have a three or four year contract, yeah. it's only what you voted and appropriated that year, even though. So with that said, you get to take all that into default. So default is usually higher. Correct. Because you can take that in. You just can't take that into the tax cap. So that's one of the warrant articles that we need to address. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think some of the confusion, too, is that when the budget committee is looking at the budget, right, um, regardless of what warrant articles passed before, they can go only go $175,000 right. So any of these warrant articles that go over the tax cap, they're going to have to vote against, which yeah. right. happens to us many times. But to the taxpayer, it... It doesn't seem that way because then what happens is t more people are you tend to put things that are absolutely needed into warrant articles because they've been cut from the budget mm -hmm. and when you get into a situation with what we've seen like now where so many of your fixed costs are being hit by inflation I mean you can't help the price of gas you, you can't yeah. And you still have to Electrician, have Kevin's the actual services, going, health insurance. Right. I mean, all those things you really can't do anything about. Utilities, road salt. You, you get, can't do anything about it. Yeah, you get into a, a dangerous situation. And I think if you just looked at those this year, that put us over the tax cap before anything else. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Common sense. So, I mean, we, we have to address it somehow. Mm -hmm. And speaking to the selectmen that put it in at the time it happened, it was never to always be at a set point. It was supposed to be looked at, raised, and moved as it went on. Yeah. You did talk to them? Yeah, talked to a couple of them. Which I think is why 
the other communities in in New Hampshire that have tax caps use that average of the CPIU okay. um, to calculate it because it does adjust for inflationary, you know, beyond your, your yeah. control. So if we adjusted the tax cap, what would we choose? Like 3% or something? I think we can give you a number of options, but I think, you know, utilizing something like the um, CPIU, some economic figure mm -hmm. that is adjusted, um, it's normally wide accepted, it's, it's you know, based on the economic climate okay. of the time versus having just a, a 3% figure or a four percent figure and maybe years from now that's too high mm -hmm. you know um, there's been a number of years in the past that the cpiu was 1.2 mm -hmm. percent yep. because that's all that w was needed um but this year it's more like eight right so I just, I looked at the figure that the three-year average that they've been using um, in the other two towns, and it was 4.6% was okay. the three-year average. So Inflation costs and everything else associated with all that. But you say three-year average, but I, I think that's low when, when inflation is going up higher like right now the inflation rate depending on what you look at is somewhere in the neighborhood of eight percent where if you take a three-year average and you've had abnormally low before then that's going to be a low figure mm -hmm. and then on the other end of the curve <coughs> it comes in abnormally high so i would think we would choose the current rate of inflation and I'm saying whatever the CPI is I don't know what the best one would be but it, it would seem that that would be more reflective of the actual costs that we have but I you know that discussion can be had at some other point but that's when we talk about the Warren article oh, you want to handle that that's how I feel get get the rating in there yeah, we, we have to do something. We definitely yeah, we do. have to do something. <clears throat> okay, next. Next we have TA report. Ms. Kleiner. So right some of this I will not go through because we just discussed it during budget, so that's <laughs> good. Um, you did the whole thing? The only, I think, the Clean Water State Revolving Fund grant, um, you know that there's going to be an RFQ that we are currently working on um, that will need to be uh, released uh, for that. Um, so we'll bring that to you when it is needed. Uh, we also have um, an item from Jason Brennan who from Conservation Committee on some trees that were discussed before um, for the Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. um, it was <clears throat> agreed upon um, that they would replace 12 trees. Unfortunately the season got a little far um, and they do not feel that they can get it done this year. Jason and National Grid actually went out and marked where the trees will be. Um, but just to give you an update on that, they're planning on doing it in the spring. Um, and you'll see four trees at Moores Falls and eight trees around um, down Albuquerque, um, mm -hmm. just across from Hidden Creek. Uh, Conservation Committee Chair Jason Brennan and I met with Eversource officials um, down on the Charles Brancroft Highway just by Cummings. 
Um, and what the purpose was to discuss where they have placed the dance floor for their power line work. Um, they will be taking that dance floor, that's the railroad ties that they lay down. They're gonna be taking yep. that up over the next few weeks. It's very bare, that vegetation had to be completely removed. The thought was with winter coming upon us, let winter um, take its course and in the springtime we'll go out there um, with the conservation committee and look at it again and see what needs to be done vegetation wise okay. <clears throat> um, yesterday in the news I'm not sure if anyone picked up on it but there was an article um, about small towns and the welfare, uh, New Hampshire Local Welfare Association passing a policy, and I will just say it's passed amongst the association, that if there is a member of a town that is leaving and relocating for housing needs, that the town would cover the first 30 days now, some of this is to address com communities, our larger cities, that have been faced with people moving into those areas for temporary housing. Maybe not finding temporary housing. Um, but the article stated that, the, that part of the association's concern was to take the pressure off the larger cities. Uh, unfortunately, that places the pressure on the smaller towns who have a sm much smaller budget um, for their local needs. Um, I have, I was contacted about joining um, the association. Um, there are some small towns that, are, that have voiced concerns but I, I still have to stress, if you read it, it's a policy. It is not a state law. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and so I think there will be much more conversation. We do need to stress, though, that there's going to be some residents in probably every community across the state that are going to have some needs with utilities, mm -hmm. right? They're through yeah. the roof. Um, and so we've been talking about that. I've been talking um, with some of the communities around us about options. Um, Southern New Hampshire Services has some money that has been passed down from the state that people can apply for. Um, so we'd like, we're collecting these resources so that if anyone needs to come forth to us, um, we can help them along with the application process um, and help them with their needs. Uh, but that was at least legislation that was adopted by the state of New Hampshire, um, and it's going through the local community action agencies and, and here. Um, That's for, uh, for fuel, heating fuel, correct? Correct. Yeah. yeah. And I understand that they've been totally inundated. I do too. I requ uh, request. Do the rise in oil prices? <clears throat> Bottom line. Wait till February hits. Yeah, I think that is the concern, and and Southern New Hampshire Services does great work. Um, I think they're they're trying to help everyone they possibly can. There's, they are using the two one one system um, to at least get information out there, but. Yeah, there's a large concern. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, we, we're going to have needs, even in Litchfield, that is uh, not only in the area of heating fuel, but electricity. food, electricity. You know, there's going to be several different things that people are going to get hit by. Um, so I don't... I don't know what we can do to prepare any more than we already have, but uh, 
uh, it's going to be tough this winter. That's certainly well. Um, and last but not least, but um, so in our going to that point, in our lobby out here, um, the food pantry is collecting for the 68 hours of hunger. So people can bring their canned goods. Um, and Morgan Wagner, uh, Litchfield Sr., is collecting for Nora's knapsacks. So <clears throat> toiletries, mittens, hats, scarves, toothbrushes, um, all for the homeless or people in transition. So there's a box in the lobby for that as well. Beautiful. One thing in the past that we have worked with the schools, particularly the elementary school, to see if there's needs. Um, it, it, you know, they sometimes are privy to information of a personal nature that people don't feel comfortable about approaching, um, you know, a government entity, but because they're on the reduced meals list or something, uh, they can identify some needs. So uh, I know in the past, Mrs. Jewett was very active in that on a personal nature. So if there's anything that we can do to work with uh, the schools in that regard, that uh, uh, we should attempt to do that. Wasn't it the women's club that always kind of had the in yeah. that would come back? They worked right with GMS and they always kind of knew mm -hmm. who needed what yeah. Yeah. and we'd work for them in order to do it. Are they still together? I'm not sure. I'm not well, sure. I think so, so. We, we put them as part of the yeah. Human services to help them out also. Yeah. Lori the Martin donations was that they were doing. That. But I'm not positive. Yeah. Would you like us to try to reach out? That would be great if you could because they've been a great asset in the past. And also, when we do the Christmas tree lighting, the Rec Commission will have a table out for canned goods and also for um, 68 hours of hunger. Rec has made it a standpoint whenever they do something now, they're always going to yeah. have a table set out to help the food pantry and help with the. 68 hours of hunger. What does the 68 mean? I understand. It's for kids that backpacks don't have enough meals and are under-resourced. So when they leave on a Friday, yeah. a backpack with everything they'll need for the weekend goes home with them. Gotcha. I was thinking 48 hours. Okay, so, yeah, so, so another day. So it carries them through until they get back gotcha. to school on okay. Monday morning. Thank you. Yeah. One of the things, and this is sort of in the same regard, uh, I approached uh, Charlie McQuestin uh, on election day to see if they had any uh, typically at the end of the, the harvest season they have a lot of squash and and that sort of thing uh, that's kind of left over and we have now with the old firehouse and it's I, I understand the temperature in there is like 50 degrees or 45 degrees or something we could very easily move a pallet of squash in there and and provide that to the as needed to the food pantry. Mm -hmm. But when I approached him on election day, they got wiped out. They totally sold everything that they had. Oh, wow. Wow. And uh, so maybe uh, it was a combination of the weather and the market and mm -hmm. so forth. But maybe we could approach like Wilson's or McQuest and whatever in the future to kind of keep that in mind, you know, uh, because bulk uh, a pallet of squash or something, you know, and we could store it and keep it. I mean, I mean we could literally keep it for a long time mm -hmm. if, we, if we had that in the old firehouse. And who knows, you know, we might have a, a situation where people would be happy to get a squash, you know? Act like a root cellar. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know uh, anybody now. Do you know anybody at Wilson's? I do. No, not really. Not really since they I closed know. down. I know the guy in charge, I'll call him. Oh, Keith? Well, it'd be for the next year. So I understand. We'll talk to them. Yeah. I mean, if they had anything. In most cases, they shipped out. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and this year, Charlie did have a bad year with squash and stuff like mm -hmm. that. He ain't got no inventory like he used to have. Yeah. Yeah, he said on a typical year, you know, he does. But, yeah. But this, this year, year he doesn't. Nope. We all good? Okay, Ms. Queen. All right, Capital Improvement Plan Committee. We last met on November 7th. Um, the library could not come in for a final presentation. They had $50,000 um, put aside for ARPA money for small projects, carpet, kids' room kind of thing, so we left it on, on, the, um, on, the, on the plan. Uh, the school did present. Um, I now, the next meetings were for tonight, so the SIP committee is meeting over at the fire station right now. So you and I are not there. <laughs> so uh, their goal tonight is to prioritize the list and go to the planning board tomorrow and present it to the planning board. But I'm not sure how that's going to go. <laughs> because really you need, after the planning board looks at it, we need to have a public hearing. And you have to post that, what, 10 days, I think, with the weekends, right, involved. And then come to the board of selectmen. So I'm hoping they're doing good work over there. Uh, but I anticipate probably one more meeting. Yeah, but I could be wrong, but we'll see how that goes. All right, so that's the plan. The plan was the 14th today they were supposed to finalize everything, prioritize. Tomorrow was the planning board. November 28th was supposed to be presenting to us here at the select board. And November 29th, the public hearing was supposed to go. So we'll see where we go with that. Uh, the planning board meets tomorrow night, the 15th, at the town hall. Uh, one thing I wanted to thank you for and Jay Mancara was we um, applied for two grants for the TTAC committee, and we have the intersection approved so far, you know, for the first approval round. The Pinecrest sidewalk did not make it in, but then there was another grant identified where we just took the data and just applied for this new grant. So that went through on November 3rd, I believe. And that's called a CMAC grant for congestion, mitigation, and air quality. And because it has to do with biking or pedestrian, it may go to the top of the list. So we'll wait to hear from that. Uh, the next uh, meeting for National Regional Planning Commission will be Wednesday, December 21st at 330 Temple Street in Nashua. Uh, that quarterly meeting being on December 21st is usually light. <laughs> usually don't get a full board, obviously. Um, the only other one thing I'll bring up is the Heritage Commission. I want to talk to you, um, well, I'll talk to you right now about that. Um, there's no problem going on, but I, I do remember when it went in in 2018. You know, we were working with Jen Sins at the time from NRPC. Uh, Jen Sins was Jay Mancara's predecessor, kind of, okay. we were working with her. And, um, you know, w you know, how things get crazy around Warren articles. So the way that that um, whole process works with the demolition permit I read the ordinance and I looked at the flow chart that goes with it online. So if you go to the town website and go to the Department Heritage Commission, you're going to see two links. One shows you the flow chart of how that demolition process works, and then you actually have the link to the zoning ordinance. For the demolition process to start, it has to be a building that's greater, I think, less than or equal to 1960 and, great, and what, greater than 500 feet. But, the, but we hard coded 1960. So I think it should not be hard coded. It should be anything greater than 60 years old. You know, so as time goes forward, we're not always going back to 1960. So 1960. That's <laughs> so you know, it's a cleanup issue. Hopefully, it'll make it through this time. So yeah. So maybe look at the zoning ordinance. That'll, we'll talk about that on the planning board. But uh, makes sense. I think the Heritage Commission. You have probably another meeting this this month that uh, we'll. I'll, I'll pass that to you. And I, t I did see Carl Frank at the to polls. <laughs> I said, well, might be reaching out to you. <laughs> so he's aware of that, okay? okay. I, I mean, you guys discuss if you want to do it. You know, right now it's hard-coded. Another year wouldn't hurt it. But if you want it to go forward, okay. we'll let you guys discuss that. I think that's all I have. Let me just check the back page. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> We're good. Okay. Oh, I'm not good. Sorry. <laughs> the, the metal detecting policy, we're going to look at Bow and Nashua. So mm -hmm. we'll get that over to, for everybody yeah, to look at. Do you want to do an ordinance on town property? Do you want to do it? It's an ordinance, or do you want to do it as a policy? Yeah, but if you want to make it an ordinance, we can as well. Yeah, it was only for town land. Only for but town you needed land. written no. permission from him. Yeah. yeah, I think we should make it an ordinance. Okay, so 
let yeah, me great. work with that. I'll just put the word Litchfield there and we'll run it by legal. I had another issue here. with that the other day. Somebody was metal detecting on the old muster grounds. Same, Same person. person. Same person. Mm -hmm. How's he doing? <laughs> Took it to social media and said he was in the water, not in the land. I know no, that. No, no, this was on the muster grounds. Did he go in the by water? By the brick house. By the brick house? Yep. That's my understanding. There's no brick house there. The Litchfield's first muster site, Sparks Old House. Dr. Sparks' old house out through there, that's private property. If, unless I'm unless I'm mistaken from what I am look, look I can look it up real quick uh, hold on one sec mm. there is a stone in tall grass there metal detecting on the field across from the brick house which is owned by the town oh he wasn't in the in on Spock's house, the old brick house. Yeah, he was in the field. He was across the street. Yeah, which is the old yeah. muster grounds from okay. the Revolutionary War. He's in the field that we plow every year. Yep. Yeah. Or strip the turf mm -hmm. off and we had land strippers back in the day. So. All those values <laughs> were straight. Take, take it out by your brother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stripping the loam off the top. So what, what do we need to do about this? On town land? Put an ordinance in place, because then it's enforceable. So in in that case, that's owned by the land by the town, mm -hmm. right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Is it designated as a historical site? Not that I know. Of. No, across the street is right where the where the marker is. Yes, that's it. But it's owned by the town. The land across the street from the brick house is owned by the town. They bought that for agricultural uses. Yep. Okay? Mm -hmm. The same with the piece behind me. Okay? They bought that same thing. Mm -hmm. There's been people out there for years with metal detectors getting the old nails and everything out of the field. I don't know what you're going to find out there now because it's been plowed out. And also, the loam is stripped off the top for many years. Okay? When they did turf farming out there. We have a lot more dust on the hill. But that's another story by itself. If we want to look at having an, or an ordinance on town property, mm -hmm. period, mm -hmm. okay, or any historical site that may not be town property, is a separate matter. Do we have any historical sites that are not town property that have not been many. deemed historical sites? This school one, I think, is the old brick house. Well, the tavern. Is in the old tavern. Yeah, historical but site. it's owned by private property. They can do what they want. Mm -hmm. They have a right to do that. Okay? But on the town land, if you want to have an ordinance, it's going to be just strictly for town land. Yep. So we had talked about a couple And that ago. includes conservation, includes any it's town land. Town it's called conservation, conservation is town land. Anything that's owned by the town. So if there's an easement on something that we have. That's a separate matter, because that's not part of the, you know, they can, the easement for this, not for that, you know? Like if, if somebody wanted to, to uh, do detecting on Moore's Falls, <coughs> they shouldn't be able to do that. Well, there's pros and cons to that. Detecting is good to have. Well, they can't do it without written permission. Correct. And they got written permission to just read, read racing on one piece by historical society. Mm -hmm. So that's what it comes down to. If you don't have written permission, you can't do it. Correct. And whatever you get, you got to give to the historical. That's what the deal is and now. Some of the policies say that. Yep. But if it is historical, I think it goes to the state. Not, Not always. <laughs> the state doesn't want it. Trust me, they got too much stuff in town. Okay. All right. Okay. That, I'm good now. All right. Sorry. Our Recreation Commission, our last meeting was last Tuesday, and I was at the elections. Our next meeting is next Tuesday. School facility improvement was last Wednesday, but I had a business meeting, so I was not in attendance. Mr. Larry. <clears throat> Budget okay. Committee, final review for the school tomorrow. Start voting on December 1st, I believe. What we want to cut and whatever. 
Thank you. Mr. Lynch. Conservation met. We had a good time. You probably know about it already, about Moore's Falls, the trail they made through through there. Yeah. Well, they made a cut trail, a small, small, small one to get me into there. They don't like it. And uh, as for Jason Brennan's doing a nice job, keeping things going, and they got pe pe people going out to check the sites, park and park and all this, this, and that, found no problems. Everything's good. Good, Mr. LaSalle's. Yeah, the Heritage Commission was due to meet on uh, election day, and that was uh, uh, postponed, and hopefully <clears throat> we'll meet uh, in December. Um, and the other uh, uh, thing that I'm on is the uh, emergency management, and nothing going on there, thank Pretty goodness. Quiet. But uh, that's the status. Congratulations on your re-election as state rep. It's going to be a very interesting year. Close calls. Because the the current, uh, there will be recounts. There's a number of recounts. Yep. Some very close races. But the current split is a, uh, 203 to 197. So generally there are 15 to 20 minimum legislators that don't show up on any given day. So the legislation is going to be very much dependent on who shows up. Dependent, yeah. And uh, I think it would be fair to say that there will be nothing passed <laughs> that is on the fringes there the on either side everything will have to be in the middle which is good uh, but uh, again pending pending uh, uh, recounts the current split as we stand today is uh, 203 to 197 which would put the Republicans in the majority, albeit a very small one, mm -hmm. uh, but for committee chairman and so forth, it would be that way. Plus for the speaker. Mm -hmm. uh, so change is good. There, there will be caucuses uh, uh, this week, in fact, to determine who's running for speaker Speak. and so forth. Okay. Thank you. We do have one other item tonight. It's a non-public session under RSA 91A32C, employee compensation. Do we have a motion to go into non-public? Make a motion. Motion by Mr. Lynch. Second. Second by Ms. Queenan. Roll call vote, Ms. Queenan. Yes. I'm a yes. Mr. Larry. Aye. 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 All right, we are now going into non-public session. While we do not, <clears throat> we do not anticipate the need to this return to public session following the non-public session for any reason other than to adjourn the meeting we reserve the right to do so if the non-public session necessitates the board taking action in public we are now going into non-public thank you for tuning in and everybody be well